booked the hall for next Thursday to hold a neighbourhood watch meeting. Yours, yeah, I'll is. definitely come. There. I think there's a need, definitely. Great. I'll see you there then. I just get the feeling that it's like someone's watching me. For who? This is all her fault. Everything. Surely. Lots of people don't think getting in a car and run over an 11 year old, do they? A girl with a whole life ahead of it. Of course they don't, that was you. Yeah, he was walking around again last night. Yeah, nearly every night now. Huh? Well, that looks like another gang murder. Which I died last night. No way. I wonder what would happen if we just pulled back on this trigger. Put your back so no one finds it. Will this take long, Detective Bolton? I promised my daughter that I'd go and see her in a play at her school. I'll try and make it quick. <sighs> have a seat. I came because we may have had a little breakthrough with the case. Did he pay his rent? Oh, yeah, he did. Why are you so bothered? Because I don't want to see people take advantage of you, mate. You're my best mate. You're too kind to people. You're just too kind. What are you on about? Yeah. I'm being serious, mate. Do you, we used to go to the pub all the time. Do you remember? We used to go to the pub and, and that geezer used to come. What was his name? He, uh, foot, Ro Ross, the footballer. He used to come with us, never bring any money with him. Every time he went, he had no money. But you were there all night giving him, buying him drinks. Constant, one after the other. People would take your kindness and take advantage of you. I don't want to see that happen. You're my best mate. You're too kind. If I remember rightly, I was paying for your drinks that night too. But that's different. We're best mates. Yes, Jaden has paid his rent. Good. I'm just trying to look out for you. Thanks. Now can we watch the film, please? What do you mean you're too unwell? Counting on you. <gasps> Hello. Oh, can you see Chapman? Thank you so much for coming. Pleasure. Pleasure. Yeah. yeah. I know it looks small. Oh, I don't believe it. Marie Chapman. Yesterday, a man was walking his dog in the woods and came across a blue bag in some of the undergrowth. In that bag was a gun. We believe that the gun could be the same one used in this case. The make and model of Fear to Pit the Bullet Type used to suit Troy. So you're telling me that you may have the exact same gun? So you might actually be able to find the bastard that did this? It's early days. Some tests are being run, but we are confident it is the same gun. As for catching the person, it's early days and I don't want to get your hopes up. But this is vital evidence. Well, when will you know? How long do these tests normally take? That's forensics and I wouldn't like to say. Roughly? I really wouldn't like to say. But I can assure you, as soon as we know anything, as always, I'll keep you updated. Are you serious about meeting me after work? Yeah, we're doing this. We're going out. I really don't want to do this, mate. Mate, you said you would the other day. You can't back out now. You promised. Right, OK, but only for a couple of hours. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. What have I told you about leaving charges on when they're not being used? Not this again. I'm being serious. Just just make sure you switch everything off when you're done with it. It's not that hard. Alright, Dad. No! I'm being serious. Just switch everything off when you're done with it. That includes the iron. Mate, I only left the iron on once, okay? And that was because I was in a rush and I had to go. No harm done. On that occasion. But you do that another time, that could easily cause a fire. Leaving the iron on is not going to cause a fire. You don't know that! Sorry. Just switch everything off, that's all I ask. 
please. Sorry. Right, I think this is everyone, so we may as well get started. First of all, thank you everyone for coming along this evening uh, to our Neighbourhood Watch meeting. As you may know, my name is Mrs Joyce Taylor, and I have organised this meeting because I feel we need to start doing more in the community to tackle crime in the area. I mean, all sorts are happening now, and it's getting worse. We've had muggings, burglaries, criminal damage, even murder. And as some of you may know, I myself was a victim of a charity scam a couple of years ago. So I thought it was uh, necessary, really, for us to get together, discuss things, and uh, PC Chapman has kindly come along to give us some more insight. PC Chapman. Thank you, Mrs Taylor. So hello everyone, um, I think it might be a good idea um, if I introduce myself. So I, I'm Marie and I'm one of the Norfolk Constabulary's community officers, um, which means I'm assigned a local area to look after and liaise with residents. Um, I think the best thing would be perhaps, do you think, to, if we start with going around the room and everyone just giving a brief introduction of themselves um, and that way we can perhaps get to know each other a little better. Would you like to start? Hello everybody, I'm Ruth. What, what else would you like me to say? That's fine, your name is fine. Oh, I am Maureen and this is my husband Patrick. And I'm Sarah. Sarah? Okay, thank you, that was useful. Um, perhaps we can start at looking, looking at the uh, local crime figures, okay, for the last year. Would that be a good idea? Okay, I've got the paperwork here. So, so in the last 12 months in Great Yarmouth, there were 355 crimes reported which works out at 49 per 1,000 people. Of these, 171 came under violence and sexual offences, 113 were antisocial behaviour. I told you, son. They'll catch you ever did this. There will be justice. You know, part of the problem is, I don't think people bother to report things to the police anymore because they don't see the point. Because, you know, you talk about statistics and numbers and all of that sort of thing, but, you know, it doesn't even come close to the real number of things. I mean, for example, Mr White, who lives just a few doors down, he had his garden furniture the, uh, stolen the other day and he didn't bother reporting it. Can I ask why he didn't report it? Because he didn't see the point. Because a few months back, he'd had his mobility scooter stolen. No one did anything about it. They just give him a, a crime reference number and that was it. That happened to me as well. What? You had a mobility scooter stolen? No, I had my purse taken out of my bag. They gave me a crime reference number, didn't follow it up and they did nothing. Well, I can assure you that all crimes are logged and reported and looked into. It's just simply that there are times when we have no leads to go and follow it through. Then we have to prioritise certain things. Prioritise how? Well, take for example a theft and we have no evidence to go on. We can't take that any further. Then say we have an assault and that assault is shown quite clearly on a CCTV camera. Well, we're obviously going to go to that first because we can solve the crime. That's understandable. I don't know about that. It seems to me they just do things so it looks good on the stats, you know, get the easy cases solved first so it looks good on the crime report or where it, whatever it is. Well, she's got a point. Surely the job of the police is to look for the evidence, irrespective of the importance of the crime. Well, it's not quite as simple as that. Um, you'll be aware that in several, you know, in, in past years, several officers have been cut back. 
So we have limited resources now, and we simply can't spend that much time on every single crime, I'm afraid. Well, that all got a bit heated, but uh, I hope we, uh, you'll be able to make the next meeting. Don't worry, I'm used to a lot worse than that. Um, yes, give me a ring and then we'll see if we can schedule something in. Um, I'd like it to be a regular thing, but obviously I've got to run it by my sergeant and, you know, he needs to think that it's worth my while coming. Mm. Resources again? Mm, that is the harsh reality of it, I'm afraid. Mm. Oh! Thank you for your input this evening, Sarah. That's okay. Hello, Sandra. Dale, you won't believe it. You won't believe who the PC is. Marie Chapman. What, Sean's mum? Yes, yes, Sean's mum. Well, what are the chances of that? I know. Oh, look, look, I can't talk about this now, Sandra. I'm at work. Well, if you're going to be like that, then that's fine. Goodbye, then. Oh, um, I must apologise. What for? Well, all this time I've seen you at the pan droppers, I've been calling you Sandra. I don't know where I got that from. Oh. God, something says. Something's burning. What, what is that? Jay, wake up. What's up, mate? Could you put some chips in the oven? Oh, shit, yeah. Why'd you leave them there? They're black. Well, what are you playing at? You're starting to cook something and then you go to sleep. <laughs> mate, they're all right. Mate, they're black. <laughs> they're just caramelised. Caramelised? Are you being serious? Like, you could have started a fire. Look, I must have just been tired and I drifted off. But I would have woken up. It was just a short nap. You are unbelievable. You of all people should know this. What if you were asleep? What if we'd all been asleep and there was a fire? You really are a fucking idiot. Look, I'm sorry. Sorry, yeah, that would cut it. Sorry would do us loads when we're dead and burning in a fire. Look, he said he's sorry, calm down. Calm down! You don't even have a fucking clue about this, do you? Look, mate, we've had a few drinks. He's, he'll, he'll calm down. Yeah, right. I'm so sorry, but I'm not able to stop. 